Volunteering at the Clearwater Marine Aquarium was an amazing experience. The CMA is a nonprofit marine facility dedicated to environmental education and research and the rescue, rehabilitation, and release of dolphins, sea turtles, and more. All their funds come from admission and donations. For a $100 donation, an engraved plaque is placed in stone blocks on the courtyard. The most popular attraction at the aquarium is the Dolphin Show, located at the 350,000 gallon natural salt water pool. The crowd cheers as the trainers direct Panama, Nicholas, and Indy into high flying jumps and fast flips. Laughter follows as they roll around playfully in their pool, resulting in belly rubs from the trainers. Guests can purchase a close encounter package where they can learn to feed and command the dolphins themselves. My favorite residents of the aquarium are the sea turtles. Since 1978, the sea turtle program has strived to conserve and protect endangered and threatened sea turtles through education, research, rescue, rehabilitation, and release. The permanent resident turtles swim alongside rehab turtles. Stumpy, an adult hawksbill permanent resident, was part of a research project at Nova University in the early 80s. Her years of captivity have made her adapt to the captive environment and could be detrimental to her health in the wild. Chet, a juvenile green sea turtle, was found stranded at Anclo Key, caught up in fishing line. He is being rehabilitated and is likely for release. Tim, another juvenile green sea turtle, was found floating in the intracoastal near Pasadena Causeway. An old hip injury makes him unable to move his rear flippers, so his release is undecided. The sea turtles with fibropapilloma tumors are kept isolated in special ICU tanks. Some receive surgery to remove the tumors and could possibly be released if they remain tumor-free for one year. The onset of tumors is still somewhat of a mystery, but biologists suspect pollution is one cause. Wyatt, Homer, and Jenny are green sea turtles. Wyatt had a tumor on his eye, and surgery caused him to lose his vision in that eye. Ellie, a green sea turtle rescued due to tumors, loves getting rubbed and scratched by volunteer Danielle. Ellie is fully recovered from the tuners and is ready for release. Mike Anderson, sea turtle biologist, shakes a flipper with Kais. She arrived with large tumors on her face. It took several surgeries to remove them, however two out of three did grow back. She had another surgery to remove both tumors and is now being monitored for regrowth. Sam, a 200 pound loggerhead, was stranded behind the Serata Beach Resort due to red tide and is being rehabilitated. Sebastian, a 100-pound green turtle, was stranded at Sebastian Inlet in Indian River County. He suffered from a severe boat hit to the left side of his carapace, therefore making him unreleasable since he has difficulty submerging. The oldest sea turtle resident was a loggerhead named Mo. Sadly, he passed away at 43 years old in August of 2006. Mo hatched on Clearwater Beach in September 1963. Mo was picked up as a hatchling before there were laws against handling, capturing, or harassing sea turtles, and lived to Pier 60 on Clearwater Beach before coming to CMA in 1982. He experienced a common shell deformity that in combination with cramped quarters in his original pool had left him with a buoyancy problem. Unable to survive life in the wild due to captivity his whole life, the CMA took excellent care of him and he is surely missed. Found floating offshore at Pasa Girl Beach, Hazel was rescued due to a condition called cold stun. When water temperatures drastically change, some turtles' muscles get temporarily paralyzed, making them unable to swim. She is now fully recovered and is ready to go home. Jack is eagerly awaiting his release date. Rescued in 2005, floating offshore of St. Pete Beach, Jack suffered from a lung infection due to red tide. He is now strong, healthy, and has been released from his big blue tank to the big blue ocean in September 2006. A very important education topic is the sea turtle nesting and hatching season. Biologists and volunteers spread the lights out message to all the coastal communities to ensure the hatchlings find their way safely to the ocean and better their chances for survival. Similar to human hospitals, medical charts are kept for each patient at the aquarium. Each shows the animal's history, statistics, foods allowed, and medications required. B. Lacey, a longtime volunteer, points out which turtles get squid and which get Kaplan fish for lunch. 
The large dry erase board on the wall of the feeding kitchen shows every patient's food and medication regimen. The otters are also a crowd pleaser, scurrying around and slipping into their pools. They are very playful and love an audience. The aquarium currently houses four North American river otters, Garth, Webster, Maya, and Cooper. Another popular attraction is the Stingray Touch Tank. Dozens of rays float through the water while fingers glide over their smooth skin. Other interesting sea creatures can be found at the Catch of the Day tanks. A daily boat cruise takes guests on a tour of the intercoastal and nets creatures to bring back to the aquarium. Unfortunately, I had to take a break from volunteering due to my hectic schedule of work and school, but I plan on returning to the aquarium as soon as I graduate and have more time. Their dedication to marine animals and their environments is remarkable, and I encourage you to visit soon and enjoy a unique learning experience you will never forget.